Okay, so we're continuing the conversation about how to prepare for your first 100 mile hike. In this episode, we're gonna talk about food, we're gonna talk about gear, we're gonna talk about finances. So stick around. So you're about to go out on your first 100 mile hike. That's pretty exciting. Now you'll be carrying everything in your back for seven to 10 days. So whatever you carry has got to be light, it's got to be functional, and, and you have to control the cost of it, you know, because some of this stuff can get pretty expensive. Now as we get older, our bodies can take less stress than what we did when we were 20 or 30, you know? So weight is pretty important. But the lighter you go, Typically, the more it's going to cost. So how heavy should your pack be? Well, I usually aim to be around 15 pounds base weight. And base weight is everything that you have except for consumables like food and water and fuel for your stove. Anything else you're going to consume. Uh, just don't consider that for your base weight. Everything else counts. Now the place you can cut the most weight is your big three. So it's your pack, it's your shelter, and it's your sleeping system. So for your pack, you should be aiming around two pounds and about 50 to 60 liter capacity. And if you could try on your pack before you buy it, even better. So go down to your local outfitter store. REI is a pretty common one, but there's others. Uh, and just try them on and see which one fits better, but try them on with some weight in them. Typically they have little sandbags or things that you can pack in there just to see how it feels on your shoulders and your hips and you know adjust it good walk around the store a bit okay so let's talk about shelters you're either gonna have a tent you're gonna have a tarp or you're gonna have a hammock we'll talk about each one of those with tents you're gonna have a lot of factors to consider right you're gonna have whether it's freestanding whether it's uh, single walled or double walled what kind of material is it made out of is it sil nylon is it sil poly is it uh, dyneema what is it a one-person tent? Is it a two-person tent? Is it seam sealed? What kind of entry do you have? Is it a side entry, one side, two sides, maybe front entry? How many vestibules does it have? And what are the size of those vestibules? How many stakes does it require? And how well does it ventilate? So those are just a few of the things that you want to consider when you're looking at tents. So let's look at tarps. Tarps are a little bit less involved because there's less features. They're much simpler. So you are going to look at size and shape. You're going to be looking at whether you want to add a ground cloth to it, you know, what kind of floor is going to be in it, and if you're going to have any kind of bug netting. You're going to be looking at how well does it protect you from the elements. Now tarps are light and they're easy to set up, but they don't offer you quite the protection that a tent does. So people usually feel more comfortable with tents than tarps. The third most popular option are hammocks. Now hammocks are a little bit different in that, you know, you're not sleeping on the ground, you're hanging in the air. And so uh, some of the things that you want to consider with these are really have to do with the size of you. So how tall are you? How wide do you need this thing? And what's the weight capacity of the hammock that you're considering? Now there's a few different styles and features with hammocks. They're essentially all the same, but there are some unique features that you may want to look for. You want to look at bug netting. You want to look at tree straps. You want to look at see if there's any side or storage pockets. Some of them even come with spreader bars. And then with each hammock, you're going to have a tarp to protect you from the rain. And there's different types and styles of tarps. You'll have a hex cut. You'll have a triangle or you have one with doors and without doors. So those are the kind of the options that you'll be looking at with hammocks. Whatever shelter system you use, you should be looking at around the two pound mark. You wanna make sure that it's simple to set up. You wanna make sure that it's durable enough and that you'll be well equipped for the type of weather that you're heading into. Let's talk about sleeping systems. So sleeping systems are essentially gonna have two elements. One of them is gonna be your sleeping bag or your quilt, and then below you is gonna be your pad or your air mattress. When considering between a sleeping bag and a quilt, there's a couple things you should be thinking about. Okay, so sleeping bags are typically heavier, but they have a hood to keep the heat in a little bit, uh, and they're better at draft control. But some people find sleeping bags to be a little bit more confining than they like. Quilts, on the other hand, are lighter. 
but they don't have a hood but they tend to be more susceptible to drafts if, especially if you don't have it connected to your pad well enough now quilts, quilts aren't necessarily a big rectangle right they have they can be but they also come with a foot box and a foot box is either uh, you know it's zippered about maybe like a quarter of the way a third of the way up the up the quilt so it forms a nice little box for your feet the insulation material for sleeping bags or quilts can either be uh, synthetic or they can be down given the same temperature rating synthetic is typically heavier than what down is but down when it gets wet uh, tends to be pretty ineffective at keeping you warm so with with anything down you want to make sure it stays dry temperature ratings for sleeping bags and quilts are not absolute so if you sleep cold you want to get a rating that's colder than the coldest temperature that you'll feel in the air at night the second part to any sleeping system is the sleeping pad or the air mattress so sleeping pads are typically bulkier and they're heavier where air mattresses are lighter air mattresses give more loft to you but foam pads are more durable. Now pay attention to the R rating on these. The higher the R rating, the more insulation value it gives. I typically go out with about an R rating of four. If it's warmer in the summertime, a two is probably good enough. Now hammock campers don't typically use pads. They use underquilts. And the underquilt is almost the same as the top quilt except um, you don't have a foot box and you're going to be looking at either a full length or a three quarter length depending on again the temperatures okay so that's the big three the big three will take up take up about typically about half the weight that you'll carry so that's why it's important to focus on those big three but there's other things we carry right so we carry clothes i, I don't carry any extra of anything except socks i have um I have a shirt and um, and some long johns that I wear at night. I don't have any extra pants. I don't even have any extra underwear. <laughs> so how do you deal with that? Well, you, whenever you get next to a creek or a place where you can wash out some clothes, then you just wash it out and you put the, like your night clothes on or whatever. So I, 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 I'm not a big, you know, I don't carry a lot of clothes with me. Now, uh, other clothes items are going to be my rain gear. I'm going to have a, a little puffy jacket like this. I might have a little hoodie or something that I'll wear. Uh, this is this is a sun hoodie, uh, so it serves a lot of purposes. Uh, kitchen and water, that's another category. Uh, so you have to decide whether you're going to uh, cook your meals or whether you're going to do some cold soaking. Now, I've done both. Um, I kind of like both. It just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. If you're going to have warm meals, of course, you need a stove and you need fuel for that. You might need a little wind blocker. Uh, you might need a little koozie to keep your food warm while it's hydrating. So think about carrying those things. Uh, water, you need some kind of uh, a water filtration system. Uh, there's all kinds out there. Uh, they weigh anywhere from a couple ounces to really a couple pounds. Uh, you're going to have toiletries like uh, you know toilet paper and a trowel. Of course, you'll need, uh, you know, toothbrush, you know, some oral hygiene stuff. And I also carry a duty bag, and in there I have a repair kit. Kind of, you know, Tenacious Tape is a brand that I use. It's really good tape for, you know, sealing up holes in your mattress or in your tent. Uh, really, really good tape. I also carry uh, some means of starting a fire, usually a couple means. Uh, I'll have some matches, and I'll put some cotton balls that are soaked with petroleum jelly. Those are really good fire starters. Uh, but something to start a fire with. Some people use flint and steel. I've carried that as well. Also in my ditty bag is my first aid kit. I'm a real minimalist with first aid kits. I carry a few band-aids, maybe a little gauze and some tape, and that's about all I carry. Uh, if you take meds, of course, you want to take your medications with you. Uh, you might, might also want to take some anti-diarrhea medicine, and you know why, right? Uh, ibuprofen, uh, Leuco tape is really common. Uh, for first aid for covering up uh, hot spots on your feet to prevent blisters uh, safety pins I carry safety pins because when I'm drying out my clothes I'm, I'll just clip them to the back of my pack if I wash my clothes during the day I can let them dry as I'm walking uh, you'll you probably need some electronics uh, if you carry a phone you want to have a battery to recharge your phone or your or your GPS uh, flashlight I always uh, I always carry a flashlight with me I, I just have this little tiny little thing that I clip to my clip to the brim of my hat 
that's all I really need. Okay, down below I have links to all the gear that I take. There's also be a link to my Patreon page, and on my Patreon page, you're going to find a hiking planning guide, which also includes a weighted decision matrix for all these tough gear decisions. So I hope that helps you out. Let's talk about food for a bit. Uh, we already talked about the stove and what you, what you might need for uh, cooking or cold soaking. Uh, but the food that you carry uh, typically is dehydrated or it's freeze dried. And you can make your own. I typically make my own at home. Uh, once in a while I'll go out and buy some freeze dried food, but not very often. Uh, it's too easy for me to make at home. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, leftovers from a meal. I'll just put, my, put it in my dehydrator. And, and as you're carrying food, uh, figure about between one and two pounds a day. Uh, typically when I start out on my hikes, um, I don't really have a, that great of an appetite for the first couple days. So I don't eat as much, so I carry less. So I've been in conversations with people about food. There are those who are of the opinion where just uh, just have calories, eat calories, and lots of them. While it's true that calories give us the energy that we need out here, our bodies are not that simple. Uh, we need nutrients, right? So it's a balance between between carbs and fats and complete proteins that really helps us become you know the performing beast that we need to be out here doing these kind of miles and this kind of work activity so um, I wrote a book about it it's called the pescatarian hiker there's all kinds of nutritional things in there that a hiker should know uh, in order to give your body the best that it needs to perform at its best certainly you can you can just calorie up but it's my opinion and it's my experience that calories alone are not going to give you the best you out there on the trail so check it out man think about it Okay, one last thing is finances for the trip. So, um, it's just a 100 mile hike, so it's nearly not all that long uh, of a time to be out there, seven to 10 days, you know, but uh, the basic advice here is, you know, to have a budget and stick with it. Um, if you don't have any gear at all, you know, that's when the budget's gonna be um, a little bit higher than those who might already have the gear. Uh, but being out on trail is about, you know, about a thousand dollars a month. But you're only going to be on trail for like seven to ten days, so it's not that big of an, of an expense while you're on trail. Of course, traveling there is going to be uh, a line item in your budget, uh, and all the gear is as well. So, uh, again, on my Patreon page, on my um, I have a planning guide in there, and there's a section on um, finances there, a whole budget sheet, and how you could save up to do this kind of thing. Um, it helps you create a plan for that. So, if you don't have that, if you'd like it, go check it out. I really hope this series helps you out, and if it has, please subscribe if you haven't already. Press the like button, share it with your friends. I appreciate that. Stay tuned. See you next time. Happy trails.